Introduction. Jeff said to us, I'm afraid. We paid attention. Afraid isn't a word you normally hear from successful businessmen and leaders. I would have expected concerned, wary, or hesitant, but not a word describing the emotion of fear. Jeff was discussing work issues with several other executives and business owners, and he had brought up a prospective deal he was considering with another company. It was a significant growth opportunity, yet there was serious risk involved. He bounced the idea off us, and we were asking questions and giving feedback. In the midst of our discussion of numbers issues, strategic concerns, logistical matters, and values considerations, Jeff said, matter-of-factly, I'm afraid. He then went on to tell us about the downsides he was concerned about. There were several, including the current economy's effect on his business, cash flow concerns, and whether or not the other company's culture was the right fit for his own. These were matters that would make anyone afraid, concerned, wary, or hesitant. They weren't necessarily deal breakers. They were more like warning flags. So we were surprised to hear Jeff saying that he was afraid. It seemed unusual. A few days later, I talked to Jeff. He told me he had decided against the deal. When I asked him why, his reasons had to do both with the numbers and with his internal anxiety. Both parts corresponded, and both his reasons and his intuition helped him sleep better at night knowing he'd made the right decision. This conversation remained with me because it illustrated something significant about leadership. Jeff paid attention to two worlds of information available to him, the world of objective reality and the world of subjective response, of hard data and soft data, ultimately of his external world and his internal world. One did not have precedence over the other. In our conversations, both worlds advanced and retreated as we discussed different aspects of his situation. Both the data and Jeff's internal response had value and were relevant to the decision he faced. And that, quite simply, is the premise of this book. Great leaders succeed by harnessing the power of both the external world and the internal world. You, as a leader, are probably more trained, prepared, and experienced in the external world than you are in the inner one. Most likely, you are able to amass large amounts of valuable information from reports, research, journals, and interviews. And you need that information. It is critical to your success as a leader. At the same time, you also need access to data within you that is just as valuable and helpful to how you lead, come to conclusions, and make decisions. This book is designed to help you understand what is inside you, what is beyond reason, and how to use that to help you succeed. Reason, in the sense of using rationality, logic, and objective sources of information, is clearly a necessary core component of leadership. No person of influence can function at high levels without it. However, there are also important leadership aspects that are beyond or in addition to pure reasoning. They are more subjective, internal, and experiential. These beyond reason aspects are not infallible, but they are highly significant and valuable. The complete leader who wants to be empowered for the next level must know how to operate with all the possible tools. This is what separates the great leaders from the good ones. There are several ways to describe what is beyond pure reason alone. Sometimes it is called your subjective, internal, or inner world. However, at the end of the day, it is simply your immaterial life. Within you are passions, values, feelings, and intuitions, as well as thoughts. They cannot be seen or touched because they are not physical. But they are real. They exist. They are an essential part of you, and they will do well for you. In this book, I describe several key aspects of your inner world, what they do and how you, the leader, can use them to bring the results you want and need to bring. Don't be put off by the psychobabble sound of the terms. These internal aspects of who you are will, if used in the right way, be a sound part of your leadership repertoire.